In this video, we're going to be looking at the fact that our computers are not as precise as we maybe expect them to be. And we're going to be looking at how that affects our finite element models. There is a quite common pitfall when making finite element models. And that is to make models that has a very wide range in stiffnesses. Very short, stiff members next to very long, not very stiff members. We're going to be looking at an example made with a library called PyNight in Python. And we'll be going through a Jupyter notebook with a few examples in it. So let's dive into it. So the first thing I said with our computers not being precise, let's just uh, make that clear. Let's say that we have a variable x is equal to 0 0.1. Let's print it with the first 30 digits after the decimal point. And we can see that as expected, we get 0 0.10000. And then we get something here that is definitely not 0 0.1. And this is a round off error. I'm not going to go into why this happens in this video, but just know that 0 0.1 is not exactly 0 0.1. And that's the same with nearly all other numbers. And this round off error shouldn't really be doing much, but let's see how these errors can kind of accumulate. So we see this example here where we set x to 0 0.1 and then we recalculate x 20 times. So first we say that x is equal to x 0 0.1 times 11 minus 1. And you can type this into a calculator and you can see that the result is 0 0.1. But let's do that 20 times. We can see every time we put the new value of x in, this error at the end gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And in the end, it's a completely different number. So this example here shows that, yes, it can actually have an effect. So let's have a look at an actual structural example and see how it affects our results there. Let's have a look at this beam here. You can see it's a beam with a cantilever on and where we have applied a load to the end of the cantilever. So this here could actually be how we would make a model if we said that we had, uh, let's say, two columns here, going down here and here, and we have a load coming down from this column up here, and we want to apply the load down here with a certain eccentricity. Then what would be quite natural to do would be to say that we just model a very stiff member out here to the right and apply the load there. Uh, then we get the eccentricity correctly modeled. So if you have a very small eccentricity, you would maybe be tempted to make a very short member here and just make it close to infinitely stiff because then you're sure that it doesn't have an effect on the system. But let's have a look at what happens when you do that. So I'm not going to go into details with how we built this finite element model in PyNight. But in very simple terms, we basically write where our nodes are and we assign some properties to our beams and then we run the model. So it's basically just us creating a finite element model with code. So you can see here we have our three nodes. And now in the model I showed you before, we had 50 inches of eccentricity on this point to the very right. Let's reduce that. Let's reduce it to maybe one eighth of an inch. Now this model is made in inches. You can also make it in uh, SI units. Then we have our main member. Our simple beam is created here. And you can see over here we have some stiffness parameters for this beam. Now, I want this little tiny short member to be very stiff so it doesn't accidentally affect my results. It's what I think I'm doing. So I put a stiffness value and say that it's just a thousand times more stiff than this other member here. Then we do some more assignments, finish the model. And then what we do down here at the end is that we find the sum of reactions, we find the sum of loads, and then we find what is the difference between the loads applied to the model and the reactions we get out. And let's look here. We get no error. That's good. What then happens if we said that this stiffness value here, a thousand times higher, that's not a lot stiffer. Maybe sometimes you just want to say maybe 10 to the power of, of 10 larger. So it's really just infinitely stiff. It's the logic you would, you would think. And let's see what happens here. Now you can see now we start having an error here of nearly 1%. And what then happens if we use a different number? 
suddenly you have an error of 35%. This is something that is extremely common to do. And it's something that can really, really produce wrong results. So now we saw how easy it actually is to make a finite element model that produces wildly wrong results. Luckily, in most commercial finite element software, you would probably get a warning about this. But it's still important to keep in mind if you model things with a very, very big difference in stiffnesses, you may actually compromise position when you're trying to do the opposite. So thank you for watching this. And uh, if you enjoyed it, just uh, follow for more videos later.